plane surfaces. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe various plane surfaces. Explain the drawing procedure of general plane surfaces. Explain various plane surfaces and their traces. Is it possible to draw all the objects around us? Yes, it is. To represent this drawing, we need a piece of paper. This paper representation is enough for a single person. If the same thing has to be represented to a number of people, we use the board. For a crowd of people, we use posters. Can you find anything unique in all these scenarios? Yes. All the three have length and breadth, with no considerable thickness, and we can make them to extend to any required size. These things are considered to be a plane. Thus, a plane is a two-dimensional object which extends indefinitely. In the previous lesson, we have studied the projections of points and lines. In this lesson, we shall discuss the projection of a plane and its traces. Before we study about the basic principle of plane surfaces, we shall learn how to draw the basic planes. A plane is a two-dimensional surface having length and breadth with negligible thickness. It may also be called as lamina. While considering the length and breadth, the thickness is neglected as it is too small. Generally, the planes are named based on their shapes such as circle, triangle, square, rhombus, rectangle, pentagon and hexagon, etc. As each edge of a square and rectangle has a right angle, that is 90 degrees, they can be easily drawn. While considering a polygon, no matter what type of polygon you have, the sum of the exterior angles of the entire corner is always equal to 360 degree. You can determine the position of each exterior angle by simply dividing the sum, that is 360 by the number of angles. Remember, the formula will only work for a regular polygon. Therefore, proper sequence of steps is required to draw a polygon. Let us now recall how to draw a polygon. To draw the regular pentagon of 40 mm side, draw a line with a length of 40 mm by using a mini drafter and name it as A and B. Using a protector, measure the angle 72 degrees from the point A and mark a distance of 40 mm. Name this as E. Same as A, using a protector, measure the angle 72 degrees from the point B and mark a distance of 40 mm. Name this as C. Now, with the help of a compass, measure the distance of 40 mm and spot C as center. Mark an arc and E as center and mark an arc. Name the intersection point as D. Now join this point D with C and E. This is called a regular pentagonal plane. It has five edges and five corners. The each line is an edge and the line or angle where two edges meet is called as a corner. There is another method to draw the pentagon is using base angle of a side. Draw a line AB for the provided length. Draw an isosceles triangle OAB with AB as base and base angle of 54 degree. O as center and OA as radius. Draw a circle passing the A and B. Mark AB as radius and bisect the circle successfully at C, D and E. Join BC, CD, DE and EA. Now, the ABCDE is the required pentagon. Next, to draw the regular hexagon of 40 mm side, draw a horizontal line with the length of 40 mm by using a mini drafter and name it as A and B. Using a protector, measure the angle 60 degrees from the point A and mark a distance of 40 mm. Name this as F. Same as using a protector. Measure the angle 60 degrees from the point B and mark a distance of 40 mm. Name this as C. Using a mini drafter, draw perpendicular lines from A and B. Now, take the compass, measure the distance of 40 mm and spot F as center mark and arc and then 
CS center and mark an arc. Name the intersection point as E and D. Now, join these points FE, ED and DC. This is called a regular hexagonal plane. It has six edges and six corners. Each line is an edge and the line or angle where two edges meet is called as a corner. There is another method to draw the hexagonal plane. When one side is horizontal, draw a line AB for the given dimension. Set A as the center and AB as the radius and draw an arc. Similarly, set B as the center and BA as the radius and draw another arc intersecting at O. Take O as a center and OA as a radius, draw a circle. With the same radius, A and B as centers, draw two arcs to cut the circle at F and C respectively. With the same radius, C and F as centers, draw two arcs to cut the circle at D and E respectively. Join the points BC, CD, DE, EF and FA. Now, A, B, C, D, E, F is the required hexagon. When one side is vertical, mark the radius AB vertically and complete the hexagon following the same procedure earlier. We will now discuss about the inscription and circumscription of polygons. The polygon drawn inside the circle is called inscription, whereas the polygon drawn over the circumference of the circle is called circumscription. Octagon is a good example for inscription. To draw a regular octagon, first draw a circle for the given diameter and connect the diagonals of the circle using a drafter. Divide it into 8 equal parts using a protractor. Generally, each part would be 45 degrees. Name each part as A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. This is called as a regular octagon and it has 8 edges and 8 corners. To draw the circumscribe or describe, the polygons are drawn over the circle. To describe or circumscribe an equilateral triangle about a circle of given diameter, draw a circle for the given diameter and mark the center as O. Draw a vertical radius OA, split the circle into 3 equal parts by dividing each part into 120 degrees. Name this as OB and OC. From the points A, B and C, draw a tangent line to the circle to obtain the required equilateral triangle. These are all the general plane surfaces and the methods of construction. Now, let us discuss about the position of a plane in the first angle projection. Before getting to the topic, let us recall first angle and third angle projections. If the object is placed between the observer and plane, it is called as first angle projection. Whereas, if the plane is placed between the object and observer, then it is in the third angle projection. While considering these two projections, first angle projections are more commonly used as they are easier to understand than third angle projections. Before heading into the traces of plane surfaces, we will see what a trace is. Any of the plane surfaces has extended, if necessary, will meet the reference planes in lines unless it is parallel to any one of them. These lines are called as traces of the plane surfaces. The traces of plane surfaces have been categorized into four types. They are 1. Perpendicular to one plane and parallel to the other. 2. Perpendicular to both the planes. 3. Perpendicular to one plane and inclined to the other plane. 4. Inclined to both the planes. Perpendicular to one plane and parallel to the other. Consider any plane surface, for instance a square lamina that is placed in parallel to the horizontal plane HP and which is perpendicular to the vertical plane VP. As it is parallel to HP, the original position will be appearing only in the top view. Hence, the top view will have the regular square and the front view will have the straight line as shown here. The square lamina is placed perpendicular to the horizontal plane HP and it is also parallel to the vertical plane VP. 
as it is perpendicular to HP, the original position will be appearing only in the front view. Hence, the front view will have the regular square and the top view will have the straight line as shown here. Perpendicular to both the planes. When the plane is perpendicular to both the vertical and horizontal planes, the front and top views will have only the straight line. In this case, the side view only shows its original position. Perpendicular to one plane and inclined to the other plane. Consider the square plane which is perpendicular to the vertical plane and parallel to the horizontal plane. If the plane is perpendicular to VP and inclined to HP, then the position of the plane will be as shown on the screen. As the plane is perpendicular to the vertical plane, the apparent view will be appearing on the top view, inclined to both the planes. Now, let us discuss the projection of plane inclined to both VP and HP. Consider a square lamina that is inclined to the horizontal plane. The top and front view projections of square lamina will be present here. When the plane is also inclined to the vertical plane, the top and front view projections of the square lamina will be as shown on the screen. Summary In this lesson, you have learnt about the introduction to various plane surfaces, the construction of hexagonal and pentagonal planes, the projection of a plane and its traces, the position of plane surfaces.